In early 2025, a Cirrus SR-22 went down in Colorado. The pilot did everything right. He yanked the big red handle, the parachute fired, and the airplane floated for almost 20 seconds before hitting the ground. And yet, he didn't survive. Now, here's the part that drives people crazy. This is an airplane famous for having a built-in parachute, a system that has saved hundreds of lives. But in so many fatal Cirrus crashes, the handle is never pulled at all. Why? That's the paradox. And it's not just about hardware or engineering. It's about psychology, training, and what people do when panic takes over. When Cirrus introduced the SR-22, it was marketed as the future of personal aviation. A sleek design, blistering cruise speeds north of 240 miles per hour, and the crown jewel, the Cirrus Airframe Parachute System, or CAPS. The pitch was simple. If things go horribly wrong, you don't need to fight with the airplane. You pull one handle, and the whole aircraft floats down under a giant parachute. To a lot of buyers, it sounded like a cheat code for safety. But here's the reality check. CAPS isn't magic. Like every safety device, it comes with limits. The parachute only works if you're within its operating envelope. A certain altitude, a certain speed, and a certain attitude. Too low, too late, you're out of luck. Even after an accident, the unarmed rocket inside the system can be a danger to rescuers who have to handle the wreckage. So yes, it's a brilliant system, but it isn't foolproof. And yet, when it's used properly, the record is impressive. As of 2025, CAPS has been credited with 139 saves and 281 people walking away from accidents they almost certainly would not have survived in a conventional airplane. That's incredible. But here's the catch, and it's the one thing that keeps me coming back to this story. The system works, but only if you use it early, decisively, and correctly. And time and time again, pilots don't. Now let's talk about the hard numbers, because this is where the paradox sharpens into something almost painful to look at. A detailed study covering Cirrus accidents from 2001 to 2016 painted a stark picture. When pilots deployed CAPS, there were 57 accidents, and eight of those were fatal. That's tragic, yes, but now look at the flip side. In accidents where CAPS was not deployed, there were 211 crashes, and 82 of them were fatal. That's nearly three times the fatality rate. The message is clear. Pull the handle. Your odds of survival skyrocket. But there are other layers buried in the data. Over time, as the Cirrus fleet grew, the overall accident rate has actually declined. In other words, the airplane itself isn't becoming more dangerous. If anything, it's trending safer. But there's a seasonal twist. Historically, Cirrus fatalities cluster in the darker months of the year, from October through March. That points to a very specific kind of risk. Night flying, marginal weather, disorientation. And here's where it gets really scary. The Cirrus was designed not for traditional spin recovery, but with caps as the fallback. In too many crashes, pilots entered unrecoverable spins and rode them into the ground without ever touching that parachute handle. So we're left staring at the contradiction. The safety system works. The statistics scream it at us. But again and again, pilots in real emergencies don't pull. And that's where the human story begins. So the million dollar question is, if the stats are so clear, why aren't more pilots using caps when it really matters? Well, this is where human psychology gets in the way of engineering. For one, there's pride. A lot of pilots, especially those flying high-performance aircraft like the SR-22, um, have a deep instinct to save the plane. To pull that red handle feels, to some, like admitting defeat. And it sounds crazy, but in those split seconds of crisis, that hesitation can be fatal. It's not that they don't know the parachute is there, it's that some part of them wants to prove they can handle it without giving up. Then there's overconfidence in technology. The SR-22 isn't some bare-bones trainer, it's loaded to the teeth with dual alternators, desync equipment, advanced avionics, and autopilot. All of that can make you feel invincible. Until it doesn't. When something starts going wrong, 
pilots can fall into the trap of fiddling with the systems, trying to troubleshoot just one more time, instead of pulling caps right away. You also have to consider who is flying these airplanes. The typical Cirrus owner might be a successful entrepreneur, a tech executive, or an entertainer. People who can afford a half million dollar airplane, but who may not have thousands of hours in IFR or in high performance aircraft. The missions they fly aren't just local hops on a sunny day either. These are coast to coast trips, at night, in weather, pushing into the exact conditions where emergencies become harder to manage. The NTSB files tell the same story over and over. VFR pilots pressing into IMC and becoming disoriented. Nighttime crashes after losing the horizon. Pilots drowning in workload inside a glass cockpit when everything goes sideways. It's not that the technology isn't there, it's that the human brain, under stress, has hard limits. A lot of human factors research actually explains this. The shell model points to mismatches between the pilot, the liveware, and the systems they're operating, whether it's the software of avionics or the hardware of the airplane. The HFACS framework digs deeper. Accidents usually stem from a mix of unsafe acts, organizational issues, and inadequate training. And the Cirrus accident history proves one thing very clearly. The danger isn't a lack of technology. The danger is how humans interact with that technology under stress. Cirrus eventually realized the root of the problem. Pilots weren't pulling the parachute because they hesitated. And in aviation, hesitation kills. Their answer was actually pretty smart. Train caps use into muscle memory. That means from the day you pick up your airplane, you don't just learn where the handle is. You practice pulling it over and over, in simulators, in mock scenarios, in training flights, to the point where your body knows the motion before your brain even catches up. The company built an entire framework around this idea. Initial training at purchase, a refresher at 90 days, and then recurrent training every six months. Not because the hardware changes, but because habits fade. If you don't keep practicing, you won't do it under stress. Cirrus called it the three pillars of CAPS training. First, knowledge and human factors. Committing before you ever leave the ground that if something goes wrong, you're willing to pull. Second, the muscle memory itself, drilling the physical act of pulling that handle until it becomes second nature. And third, decision making. Learning when to pull, because that's its own challenge. Just like fighter pilots train for when to eject, Cirrus pilots are told, if it looks like you're losing control, if the engine fails in bad terrain, if you're out of options, you don't wait, you pull. And there's science behind this. NASA studies on emergency decision-making show that when people are under extreme stress, their cognitive bandwidth shrinks to almost nothing. You don't think creatively. You don't weigh options. You fall back on whatever your body has practiced the most. If you've never physically rehearsed that caps pull, chances are you won't do it when it counts. At this point, it should be obvious. The SR-22 itself isn't some dangerous death trap. It's a phenomenal airplane. The danger happens when high performance collides with human limits. Think about it. The more technology you load into an aircraft, the more temptation there is to lean on it. Deasing, Terrain, awareness, autopilot, all of it makes you feel like you can push further into icing, fly into marginal weather, or take that night IFR flight you probably shouldn't. But when the tech starts failing, judgment becomes the last line of defense. And judgment under stress, that's where humans break. This isn't just about individual pilots either. Aviation safety experts remind us human error isn't just pilot error, it's about culture. It's about whether recurrent training is encouraged or skipped, whether organizations normalize cutting corners, whether the community teaches that pulling caps is smart, not weak. And that right there is the bigger lesson. Safety is never about a single piece of hardware. Not about a parachute. Not about a fancy avionic suite. Not even about the airplane itself. It's about human factors, discipline, and mindset. The Cirrus is proof of that. So here's the final punch. The parachute is always there, built into the airplane, waiting to save you. 
But when the sky turns dark and the ground comes rushing up, the real question is this. When that moment comes, will you pull it? Let me know down in the comments. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.